What's up everyone? Excuse the shades, I have huge bags under my eyes. Uh, today again we're back at the Shanghai International Convention Center. Uh, got eight booths to go through, like 6,000 stalls. We're going to keep bringing you the hottest tech. Uh, today I'm going to see what juicy tech we can find, get my grubby little hands on it and uh, see what we see. Let's go take a look. Okay, and here we are at the wheel top stand. This is something we weren't expecting from wheel top. Uh, yeah, wireless electronic shifting on a Chinese group set. So maybe we all thought this was going to come from the likes of Sensor or someone else, but no, out of nowhere, this brand called Wheel Top have brought it out. Uh, at the moment, built for mountain bikes, uh, but yeah, wireless shifting. Uh, they said they've got 11 speed version, 12 speed version, uh, fully wireless, waterproof, no problem. The biggest uh, free, uh, cassette size it can take is apparently a 52 tooth. Uh, it looks like it's struggling to go on a bit to the big ring there, but we'll have a look at that after. Other than that, uh, shifting seems pretty good, pretty responsive. I think uh, this is the start of it. You know, everyone's been waiting for Chinese electronic shifting, and uh, yeah, it's here. <laughs> So yeah, after having a quick play around with the uh, top, wheel, wheel top, whatever it's called, uh, electronic shifting, yeah, fairly impressed. Uh, still a little work to be done maybe, some of the shifting is uh, a bit slow, and then maybe they didn't have it set up perfectly on this rig, and the, the chain noise was a bit horrible, like I don't know how much lubrication it had on it. Uh, the one that was on the bike, on a static trainer, was shifting a lot better. Uh, maybe that had got less abuse, but uh, but yeah, overall, uh, it's definitely a promising future. Uh, obviously, this version is just from mountain bikes. They say a road bike version is coming out next year, I believe. Uh, they said the hardest thing about developing it was like uh, avoiding treading on other people's patents, which you know, fair play. Uh, they respect other people's patents, and then they have to do the work to get around them. So. Price-wise, I think the number I heard quoted was around about 3,000 RMB, uh, which in US dollars is like, what, uh, 450 US dollars? Uh, maybe a bit less, and that's just for the, the rear derailleur and then the shifter at the front. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it's the super magic bullet that we're all waiting for quite yet, uh, but it's definitely a big step in the right direction, and it uh, yeah, shows lots of promise. Here we are on the IGPS Sport booth. Uh, if you want good value for money uh, cycling computers, this is where it's at. They've got a wide range, but there's two that caught my eyes. Uh, number one is the IGS320. Uh, now the IGS320, that his party piece is his battery life. A claimed 72 hours battery life, so perfect for your Everesting or your crazy randonora events. Yeah, 72 hours battery life. A super simple, um, super simple UI to it. It's even got built-in navigation. If you're like, if your track file has the, the uh, points built into it, it'll give you a, a reminder of how many meters late you need to make a turn and stuff like that. Uh, the other one that caught my eye is the IGS 620. Uh, that one's got uh, proper navigation built in, uh, full color uh, screen, and uh, also uh, a good, a good battery life on it too. So yeah. If you're after a good uh, low-cost alternative to some of the big name power, uh, to some of the big name cycling computers, I think uh, IGPS Sport are definitely worth a look. Okay, and here we are on the Akubitsi stand. Uh, lots of e-bikes growing in this year's uh, show. There's whole halls dedicated to them. Uh, but I was walking past this stand, and something caught my eye. And uh, yeah, this uh, this bike here. Uh, these bikes, they've got three bikes on design here, which uh, look really interesting. Uh, like I say, I don't know much about uh, e-bikes, but I was asking just, apparently this one has a 750 watt motor, so that's, uh, that's more than my legs can put out. A huge battery in there, apparently it's good for around 50, 60, 80 kilometers of range. And yeah, one of these things looks like it could uh, tear up the streets. I was asking the top speed, apparently unlimited, the top speed is around 45 or 50k an hour. So uh, yeah, nice little thing for whizzing around town or tearing up some small trails, I guess. So after checking the bike out in the booth, uh, the guys actually wheeled it outside on the main concourse for me. And uh, I had some fun whipping up and down on it. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, it's obviously got pedal assist or you can just pull the throttle and ride it like a motorbike. 
Uh, I don't think I'm a convert, don't worry, this channel's gonna stay going about bikes, but I just find it amazing, like, uh, the the price on this, I think, goes from 600 to $1,200, depending on the size of the battery, and that's so much bike for your money, like, look at the prices of road bikes these days, and then compare to this and what you get for your money. I can't believe it. So anyway, yeah, sorry about the random e-bike segment, but it's just crazy what you can get for your money. And so now we can't talk about bike tech without talking about Magin. Magin's growth in China has been pretty crazy these days, also growing pretty well overseas. And uh, nothing crazy new this year. Uh, two main things. Number one, a slight update to OneLab, the cycling software. It's looking pretty graphically amazing. Not sure what other new features are. I'm going to have a go at home later, download it, give it a try. At the moment, OneLab is no longer free. It used to be fully free, but now they're uh, they are taking subscriptions. I'm not sure exactly how much it works out to. It's a lot cheaper than Swift, but yeah, no longer free, which is a bit of a bummer. Also, this year they have a new trainer. Uh, it's the T200. Uh, it sits somewhere between the T100 and the T300 in terms of levels and features and price. Another option in their range, let's say. Uh, one other thing that Magina have is their new rocker board. Uh, I think it can move forwards and backwards and left to right, so obviously making your uh, indoor training experience a bit more realistic. So uh, yeah, it's all good. After the Magin store, I headed over to XKD, and uh, nothing majorly new there. They have a new version of their own crank arms, uh, aluminium, uh, not super light, but much more dependable. They changed the center spindle from aluminium to titanium. So apparently that was for extra strength, uh, but it got a bit heavier. Uh, I think one of the reasons there's not been a whole bunch of new tech this year it's just because everyone's just busy trying to get the old stuff out of the door. Uh, everyone's trying to fulfill orders, everyone's trying to meet demand, and there's just not much time or not much energy left over to bring out new products. Uh, we're here on this Ride Here, Ride Now booth. They seem to be focused more about indoor training. So we've got some uh, static trainers from Think Rider. Uh, maybe lots of us have heard of Magin, but Think Rider are another brand that's pretty popular here in China. I uh, also have some uh, rocker boards from Ride Now. Uh, I have one of these to review that I've been reviewing for a few months now, and uh, it's still going strong. I use it for all my training, indoor training, uh, but I don't do that much indoor training these days. But yeah, my bounce board's going fine. I'm working on that review. These Think Riders, uh, they bring out new products quite often. Yeah, I was just talking to the, the guy, he was saying they're getting more and more reliable with each generation. So uh, yeah, uh, the prices are going down, accuracy is going up, everyone's happy. Another piece of cool tech was these Fovno roof racks. So like the Racine ones that I reviewed before, you know, suction cup stuff. But this time you don't have to do any manual pumping. Uh, a vacuum pump inside sucks all the air out for you at the push of a button. Uh, another advantage is if it starts leaking air in, the pump will automatically top up the vacuum and uh, yeah, keep a good seal. If it does lose its suction, there's a little alarm monitor that will go off inside the car so you know there's a problem. And uh, yeah, just a, an automated system. And that was about all for electronic tech. Well, no, there were hundreds and hundreds of e-bikes, but again, not my thing and I can't tell one from the other. Uh, there were also lots of lights and some smart helmets, but I think I need to do some more research about those before pulling a video out. Uh, the other tech that was there was non-electronic, so some group set stuff, but uh, I'll put that in another video as it's getting too late and I'm starting to drovel nonsense. Anyway, hope you're enjoying the coverage. I do read all the comments, so let me know what you think, good or bad. Uh, please do me a small favor and hit the like button. It takes you a fraction of a second and really does help me out. So thank you. Uh, another big shout out to everyone on Patreon who supports me. The coffee here in the convention center is stupidly expensive. So that's really helping out. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's more content to come from the bike show. 
Uh, I've got some videos coming out about clothing, helmets, uh, wheels, group sets, and a whole bunch more. So stay tuned for those. Alrighty then. China Cycling out.